The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. All right. All right. Yeah, because I, I know, Teddy, I'm sure you have some opinions or thoughts on what, what, what we all saw last week as well. So I'd love to get your perspective on all that. So this is going to be a fun, a fun segment. But go ahead, Tux, take it away. Major global outage of every kind of service, which is caused by a forced update pushed from CrowdStrike that had a bug in it that would cause Windows machines to basically crash on, on boot and not be recoverable. Um, and we've got this tweet from Raymoji here. Um, I don't think you guys fully grasp how big this is. Around a billion computers are bricked worldwide, mostly corporate ones. This isn't just an online service going down for a few hours. Every affected computer needs to be rebooted in fail mode and have a driver manually removed. Most corporate computers given to employees don't let users do this themselves. Even if they could, imagine every single double-digit IQ wagey trying to handle a moderately complex task when many don't even know what a file is anymore. I can't stress enough the scale of this happening. And we've got some videos and some images here we can look at. So here's a Milwaukee airport. I They don't really actually show anything here. Um, they just say chaos. There's That might just be a generic video. Um, but as we can see here on this video, or these pictures down here, we see um, this is probably unrelated. There's a lot of there's a lot of fake images going around of people trying to get attention. This is probably unrelated. This is Windows 7. Um, that's not even win a newer version of Windows. That's an old machine. Uh, laptops all in recovery mode on a newer version of Windows. Um, Delta like Airlines. That. There's some TV screens that are the, the stuck in the computers behind them are stuck in recovery mode. Um, there's some checkout systems. The computers behind them are stuck in recovery mode. Um, yeah. Was that, was that photo of Vegas where they showed the sphere with the? Blue that was definitely fake. <laughs> oh, okay, that there, was a, like, there is a He's ton not, of people are just yeah being goofy. That was a great one. That was a great. One. That was like I was I was hoping that was real. Um, yeah, people are just making jokes and being goofy, and now what, with what's going on here, man? So was this just like this was just an? Do they do people? What are the conspiracy theories here? Is this just uh there was an error or there uh, was. Are there, so it was, it was, there was some bad code that was pushed that has the computer attempt to access memory that, that doesn't exist. Um, and because these drivers are running in highly privileged space, Windows, out of abundance of caution, will kill the OS instead of normally it can just kill the program. But because it's running in a privileged space, it's a privileged driver, uh, it just kills the OS. And the only way to fix that is to boot the os into recovery mode and then the worst the worst case scenario is if you have like hundreds of deployed windows computers and you're using crowdstrike falcon and you're also using bitlocker which bitlocker is full disk encryption for windows devices you have to then manually for every single machine enter the bitlocker uh encryption uh, recovery key then fix it for every single computer um, so that's a worst case scenario, but even best case scenario, you still have to have manual intervention for all of these computers you have to have manual intervention to go on there, remove the bad file or remove the driver altogether, and then update it once they fixed it, once they patch it, which I believe they patched it already. Um, but this has caused crazy amounts of services to go down. I can pull up, uh, let me pull up down detector. Um, Tons of services were affected by this. Uh, so you can see on down detector here, um, over the past day, it's a little harder to tell now um, as it was a couple days ago, but um, the major, majorly affected services was like Microsoft 365, all the airlines basically. So like Delta, Great. American Airlines, Southwest, and banking systems, they were all affected. A lot of companies use CrowdStrike and use CrowdStrike Falcon. Um, I see a so couple they of were... banks on that too. Yeah, some pretty yeah. large banks like Chase, uh, TD Bank. Oh yeah, oh yeah, very very large. Um, a lot of the internet was basically effectively down for a while, um, which usually is like what, an. What AWS. do you think, Matt? Yeah, what do you, what do you think is going on? Was this was this was there foul play here, or was this just some uh, unfortunate event? I don't. 
didn't see that yet. Was there like, negligence? Was there? Yeah, there was negligence for sure. Uh, there was there's a bad code that was that got past QA and then was pushed to hundred probably several hundred million computers. And the whole thing with CrowdStrike Falcon is that it's security software and it's always automatically updating without manual user intervention. And so this update was pushed, got pushed to hundreds of millions of devices um, and clearly we did not go through a QA or a basic check process um, because the the bug that was, was quite obvious. Um, if you're a, even a reasonably competent C++ developer um it's very obvious what happened um it's kind of a basic like a basic bug too um but this is something when, uh, that sorry go ahead well, when did this exactly go down when when did this happen um this went down it was a couple i want to say it was a couple days ago um i think it was early thursday morning that makes a lot of sense uh yeah i've had uh, you know my bank's usually good you know i use chase and the last two three days, um, my bank's been closed down. Like no tellers, just TMs only. Um, it's been an unusual activity, and I would go from branch to branch, and it would just seem to be consistent. You know, in uh, on Friday, on Thursday, I'm sorry, the uh, ATM wasn't even working correctly. So I, maybe that has something to do with it. But this is the. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's very possible. Um, it was actually I think it was actually early Friday morning. Um, if you're looking at this article, it was like I wasn't even awake when it happened. Um, early okay. Friday morning, but it's very possible because, um, a lot of a lot of big businesses like banks and stuff they use CrowdStrike and CrowdStrike Falcon. Uh, and so it's very possible they were affected by that. Um, as you can see, there was a lot of banks and a lot of airlines. Um. Yeah, like I knew people that were trying to book flights, but they literally couldn't. They were unable to. Um, and I might have some more images. Yeah, I was unable to deposit money, let alone uh, withdraw. Yeah, yeah, it's very possible that had something to do with it. Uh, and it's it's becoming resolved now, but something like that is, it's it's pretty insane. And I mean, this goes to show the danger of centralizing our technology as much yeah. as possible yes, no. and with yeah, the, the whole, issues the of bridges. yeah i mean thousands i mean this is the same thing that we deal with with like when aws goes down aws has a, a region that partially goes down or there's a dns issue with cloudflare it just shows you how reliant all the internet is on these services that become very centralized because everybody uses them at the same time um like big services so i mean this is just one that's it's a different it's a different way of having an issue but it's it's very clear it's an issue it's like oh wow they can just push this update that just automatically goes through and just bricks millions hundreds if not hundreds of millions of computers um and that could be used as an attack vector uh if somebody wanted to effectively take down like critical infrastructure because that's basically what it was did you see health rangers um conspiracy theory on this see if you could bring that up yeah, let me see if I can uh, find that real quick. Yeah. I mean, he's basically saying they use they use this as as the time to uh, basically attack the network for future attack. That's that's what uh, the health brain. I don't know. I don't know what he's basing this theory on. Like what? Uh, but he's uh. He's basically saying they're gaining access he, he, for, for future. Uh, yeah. Yes, right? exactly for a future attack. I mean, it affected the entire global network. Yeah, I can see here in his quotes, he doesn't believe it was a bug. Um, but yeah, so this is the guy here who did the analysis. Um, it was a null pointer from memory unsafe, which is C++. C++ is not memory safe. If you manage memory, C++. Um, and it was, it was an attempt to access memory that was unreadable. And in C++, if you don't handle that, it'll just cause the program to crash. Um, using Rust would prevent that from happening easily. Um, let me see if I can actually find... Yeah, I can't really read the screen from here, but yeah, Health Ranger had put out a tweet. Should be setting uh... up security alarms everywhere. The CrowdStrike remediation method requires a special boot sequence. Yeah, we did cover that. Um, 
during that time, the window server is wide open to penetration attacks. As the crowd, sh- can you read it? Yeah, during that time, the window server is wide open to penetration attacks. Okay, this this statement doesn't make any sense. Um, there's no like Windows server. Oh, I guess he's talking about generically Windows servers are open to penetration attacks. Is the crowd strike code is not fully active? Well, if it's the system's not even running. Okay, the system's not even running. It's it's it, d- it didn't even boot because of the bug. So there's nothing to really attack because it's not even running. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't totally agree with that statement. Um, should, should we? Guessing... Should we get health? Should we get Health Ranger to come to Monerotopia? Sure. Why not? That'd, that'd be cool, right? That'd be fucking awesome. I don't know if there's any conspiracy to be had here. Um. It's. It's very. I mean, maybe someone was seeing how far they could go with, um, quickly taking down infrastructure. Now, there's nothing. There's nothing to be had here in terms of like, oh, like backdooring or whatever. Now, it's possible if CrowdStrike. Someone in CrowdStrike wants to. They. They could potentially create like some kind of backdoor, uh, in, because they have a access to automatically push updates to a privileged driver on Windows mm-hmm. machines. However, uh, I know they're going to be under extreme scrutiny now because of what just happened. Like extreme, like there's going to be, they're probably going to get fined or something by the government. I, I imagine something will happen because um, of how much economic damage just occurred from that happening in the past day mm-hmm. uh and it's pretty it's pretty crazy uh how ransomware teams you know they go and target specific individuals but i mean this this just caused more damage more economic damage than any hacker group could possibly dream of so pretty and funny who are, the victims, and who are the victims exactly besides uh, all those companies are there any individuals no, not really individuals, but just all, any anybody who is using CrowdStrike Falcon, which will be enterprises, right? It'll be big, bigger businesses um, okay. who want the security software. Um, but of course, that trickles down and affects you as all a consumer. Clients, right. Right. And I'm trying to find this video. Um, but there was a video of basically the FAA called to assuming this is this isn't like fake info because people are seem to be saying whatever they want there's a video of um the FAA basically a call to ground all flights because of this issue um because of how it's affecting airlines and you see the video of basically all flights flights getting grounded for a short period of time um and i don't remember if that's happened since 911 um where all flights were like nationally were grounded right that explains all the uh, videos of all the airports uh, being packed and looking like yes. zoos. Yeah, because uh, a lot of the machines that were used to display like um, flight times and uh, gates and stuff, those were all down. Um, and a lot of the computers that people were using to actually scan boarding passes and to handle support issues on the airlines themselves, well, those was, was were down too. Uh, so that caused yeah, a major a disruption. Insane. It, yeah, it pretty unprecedented down, disruption. Down. Yeah, like they go it trickles down to like even the the computers and the scanners of of the uh, boarding passes. That's that's crazy. Oh yeah, for sure. And it just it depends on if they're using that. But if they were if they happen to be using CrowdStrike CrowdStrike Falcon, then yeah, they ran into that. And you know, at the airport, you just see like. So, do do you think this is? potentially and in any indication of a, a larger attack coming i mean i, I don't really i mean really it's, no it's possible i don't see that immediately it's i think this this more more than anything else just shows like how we need to stop centralizing everything so much yeah um, for sure things need to be more there needs to be more competitors for more things, um, and people need to stop all using the same thing because uh, that's Absolutely. this is what can happen. We 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 need a Monero mesh network for sure. So yeah, this is the uh, twelve hour time yeah. lapse of the FAA and grounding of all the major airlines. Um, so you see, like right around this time, there's like practically. No flights oh, happening. Yeah. Yeah. Pick back up pretty quickly. 
but you can notice like the inf- the inbound flights. You notice a few of them coming in, but like there's no outbound. Yep. Yep. At that one, yep. yeah. You see a cut? Yeah, you saw that, right? But... Like Pretty Sim crazy. City. Crazy. Yeah, man. The, the simulation in general has been seeing a lot of crazy events. <laughs> <laughs> the simulation that we live in has been like, you know, it's been having some... major historical events. Dial was cranked yeah. up a little bit. Yeah, we're, we're living. Uh, we're Somebody, living in somebody's having time. fun not playing yeah. SimCity right now. We're, uh, we're living in historic times. Uh, you know, within the last five years or so. I mean, I would I would say probably since 2016. Ever since like Trump kind of came out, you know, things have really taken a turn. Even with Obama, Obama did a lot of bad things that people aren't aware of. Um, but it was never like so mainstream, and nobody even cared. You know, like if you thought about it, nobody really made a big deal about it. You know, he so many drone strikes, he killed you know American citizens, and it was never really in the mainstream. But ever since like Trump came into office, there's just this hidden agenda behind it. A lot of stuff, and, right? Like, yeah. am I the only one who feels that way? No. Like, we're living in historic times. Yeah, for sure. I think so. I mean, look at this assassination attempt. Right. Yeah. The fact that... Pretty, pretty uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. Sorry to jump, jump off topic. Oh, no. For sure. That's why you're up here, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have a, what, have what, a response yeah, yeah. here from Evgeny, who is the creator of Simple X Chat. While the responsibility for the global outage seems to be put on CrowdStrike, what is really surprising is that few people are talking about the real guilty party here, Microsoft. The world should not have known CrowdStrike by name, even though it is a fitting one for the occasion. It's pretty hilarious. And Microsoft should accept the full responsibility for all damages happening from Windows policies enabling it. This could have easily been prevented if Windows had a policy that such global simul- simultaneous update in, a, in the privilege code is not possible. Not foreseeing this scenario, given Microsoft's size and resources, shows that the company has a very limited understanding of how to do reliable software engineering. All right. All right. Uh, moving on. So uh, now on the topic of major, more major historical events, uh, Trump's assassination attempt. Um, I'll actually share. I'll actually pull up and share a video before I show. Yeah, this. we got 170 live viewers right now. Teddy said he wanted to make this the most popular stream we've ever make- done. I like Teddy. Yeah, do what you got to do, man. I don't know. You guys make it go viral. So you're at 170 live views. So, t- so tell people to, uh, you know, like it, share it. Yeah, like, share, and subscribe. Do not forget <laughs> to subscribe. It, uh, it helps us, and uh, it, it helps the, the economy. It helps everybody. It helps you guys, too. It's good for your right. soul. <laughs> uh, so here is the Oh, look, the we video. went up already. 175. 175, yes, definitely legit. Let's let's get a rock and a roll. Let's get let's get some new viewers watching really today. See something that said, take a look at what happened. This is un, unreal. Uh-huh. I I do think it was glass though that hit him. I don't think it was a bullet. They said it might have been a ricochet. Yeah, I don't think. I really don't think a bullet hit his ear. It's hard to tell because obviously we're seeing the other side of it. Um, but that was the initial reaction that I had. You could see, like, you see blood. A piece of glass there. or like some kind of like, ri- yeah, rickish, like something shrapnel makes more sense to me than a than the bullet. Than a bullet, right? Crazy. I just can't I see mean, how it's, it's, it's hard to know because we put a little hole. It, it's, it's hard like, to know. Um, because yeah. we can't see that. We don't see that side, right? Um, but it would have like blown his whole ear off, wouldn't it? Like, how do you? Well, make I mean, some people are saying right. that, but we don't know the exact the exact angle. We don't know like where it actually hit. It's it's we we don't. I, see I'd, it. Bet, I'd bet on shrapnel. I, I, that would be my bet. Yeah, they, they well, what would the shrapnel have, be from? Well, they should have more information about it at this point. You know, the investigation has been going on for a couple of days, and yeah. right, all the logistics and yeah. stuff. Well, no, I heard like a screen got shattered or something. 
It was definitely sharp now. Yeah. I definitely heard Well, not sharp next now. to him. I mean, he's standing kind of like far away from anything <laughs> else, you know? Mm. There's nothing, yeah, there's I nothing mean, that, there's no shrapnel that would have hit him. Um, but uh, it's definitely, you know, as, as it's, as after this has happened, as things have come out, it's been very, it's been more and more clear that there's definitely some insider stuff going on. And it's very possible that there was maybe even a second shooter. Um, that one Yeah, on sure the tower, that. on the water tower. Yeah, in the water tower. People are speculating on that. Yeah based on how there was several shots, several shots, um, not just one. Mm. Uh, the Secret Service knew the most obvious inside job of all time, in my opinion. Uh, so basically, this is where the shooter was. You can see the guy down. And people here, people are actually videoing him right there. Yeah. 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 You mean where everybody is pointing? <laughs> everybody in the crowd is pointing at this guy, and yet... Uh... They, they did say a cop went up on the roof, right? Looked at him. No, this was this was around. after. This was after. Right. But if we look here, we see. Uh, There's a good one where they show the time. Money. They show the time change happening from what's happening on stage versus the people seeing. And, and you see they have a good three minutes to get the word out. Oh, yeah. This is the first video that came out. You can see behind us the Brinkles Farming Greenhouse here. We had a party. Um. And we all decided, hey, you know, when, when we hear Trump up there, we're going to walk up through the field, stand by the trees up there under the shade, yeah. and watch the, and listen to the rally, right? We couldn't see him, but we could hear him. So we walked up, and probably five to seven minutes of Trump speaking, I'm estimating here, I have no idea, you know. But um, we noticed a guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. Absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him. You know, he's, he's crawling. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him up the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two or three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. So you're, you're certain that the shots came from that guy on the roof? hundred percent. Hundred percent, and he he was up there for a couple of minutes. He was up you there. You were up there for a couple of minutes. Absolutely, at least three to four were, minutes. And you were telling the yep. police and the secret service. We were telling the police. We were pointing at him for the secret service. Who were looking at us from the top of the barn. They were looking at us the whole time. When we were standing by that tree. Could they see binoculars? Him? Could they see? Him? Probably not, because the roof, the way that the slope went, he was behind where they could see. But but why is there not secret service on all of these roofs here? I mean, this is not a big place. Did you see, I mean, obviously everyone, when the shooting started, everyone was very panicked. Did, oh, did you see what happened to him at all? Oh, yeah, they blew his head off. Okay, sorry. Secret Service blew his head off. Okay, just be careful because we don't even quite know who's watching, but you, you're pretty sure they, they, they shot the guy. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. Yep. You, you saw that happen? Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. And did you see them go up to him afterwards? or? They Yeah, they crawled up on the roof. They had their guns pointed at him, make sure he was dead. He was dead, and that was it. It was over. It's incredibly shocking. The guy was on the roof right there. <laughs> BBC guy, man. Right there. Did you get a look at him? I, I, no, it's all so surreal. Muted colors, tan type clothing. I, we saw the rifle flinging around as he was trying to crawl. I mean, we saw the rifle 100%. Do you, do, I mean, do you know about guns? Do you know what kind of weapon it was? Oh, I absolutely know about guns for sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, there is a rifle of some sort. I wouldn't know, you know, I wasn't close enough to read the label on it, no, but, sure. but it, was, it was a rifle of some sort. Yeah, absolutely. So, what do you, how do you process what you've just seen? <sighs> I, I don't know what to say, man. All I'll tell you is, you know, if I, if I walked up close to there with, anything that can secret service considered a, a a problem i wouldn't be standing here talking to you right now but i don't know why a guy who we're standing there pointing out to police and secret service is crawling up the roof 
Yes, we're right there by that tree. We were outside the security perimeter. But my question is, there's only a few buildings around here. Why is Secret Service not on every building here? Well, there's a whole bunch of questions. I think they're going to come. There's a whole bunch of questions. Yeah. Yes, she was right in front of me. She kept going back and forth right in front of me. Yes. We got to get this guy down to uh, Monerotopia. I mean, nice horse, <laughs> nice lady running with a flag. It seemed very, you know, patriotic. But what, what's what's the significance of that? No, she just he asked me if I saw a horse. Okay. okay. Or right, listen. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, well, that, that speaks to our uh, our media here uh, is uh, the fact that the first uh, civilian witness interview was done by the BBC. The BBC, right? yep. Right. Pretty funny. Yeah, Pretty funny. Know. Yeah, you would think at least like MSNBC or yeah. even Fox for that matter, you know, would be one of the first. Yep, there were... Yeah, bystanders yep. saw the shooter on the roof with his rifle or police and Secret Service in advance. They did nothing in total breach of Secret Service protocol. Also, I, I've seen some people say that turns out it wasn't mostly Secret Service that was there. Um, it was actually uh, like not, it was like security, but not all just Secret Service. And also that the local police was cho was told not to come. Um, I don't have the tweet. By the FBI, right? The FBI was told yeah i don't have the exact tweet pulled up so i don't remember exactly what the details were um but basically these buildings were only 250 feet away from each other uh it's so close that you know people could see it people could see them um and there's no way that they didn't know right there's no way that they didn't know people told them well, they obvious. were aware mm -hmm. very obvious um some audio analysis going on there um and i know there's there's more from this guy. Um, whistleblowers have come forward stating that most of Donald Trump's security on the day of assassination but was not Secret Service. The DHS assigned unprepared and inexperienced personnel specifically for this day. Um, assuming assuming this is uh, a real letter. Uh All right, a lot of this is very up in the air still. It's it's hard to know now, especially uh, with like all the AI stuff, what's real and what's not. Um, what, one, always... three, one three is saying, have any of you considered that it was a staged and scripted event? Yes, I yeah, see people sure. saying that. I know I, that's why I was hoping Body would be up here because he was he was kind of going off about it. Yeah, we got to get Body up. Is he, is he coming up or is he? I don't know. He's... he's He's, I don't know. They got body. They got body. They don't, they just they silence them. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I think it's yeah. a kind of a silly over analysis because here's the thing, right? It's not mutually exclusive that Trump isn't actually, because I got the, the argument I see a lot of people giving is that, oh, Trump's part of the deep state too. Why would they want to kill? Okay. Well, it's not, they don't have to be mutually exclusive that Trump is partially part of the deep state and he's also hated by other people within it. Those don't have to be mutually exclusive, okay? Right, all right. That That is, and it. what is true is that Trump is Trump is still hated uh, by a lot of people. Uh, he still, he still does a lot of what he wants, right? Um, he's not, he's not the kind of person that they have, will ever have full control over. Yeah, he's got money from lots of people, right? Like he takes, he takes like, he's got the Israeli money, right? Um, yeah. so there's, there's some things that, he, that some groups that people he takes money from, which money, you know, never comes without strings attached. Oh, look, there's body body. I'm pulling you up. Oh, we got body up. Here we go. Hey, what's up guys, man. I'm sorry. I'm late. I can only no, provide no uh, bad excuses. Not, so I won't try and provide any. <laughs> <laughs> we're just pleased to have you, man. We, we jumped into news cause we were waiting for you. Um, so Excellent. actually now we're, we're on the topic of. That was me Trump pressing the back button on my mouse on accident. The Trump attempted assassination. And uh, obviously, we wanted to get your word on, on all these crazy things that have been happening. Yeah, obviously, I've been pretty vocal um, on Twitter about the whole thing. Um, I mean, the first thing, obviously, that strikes me is, is how incredibly convenient the whole thing is. Like, in every, in every way possible, it's just super convenient for rallying these sort of, like, half-witted libertarian, I mean, not witted, but, you know, 
these like sort of half libertarians that were like lukewarm on Trump. And now they're all like, yeah, Trump and, and yeah, America. And it's like a very similar thing kind of happened in 2016 where everyone was like, yeah, Trump is against the deep state and he's going to like go, go to fight for us. And, and now kind of the same thing is happening after Mr. Warp Speed vaccine locked down the entire country, didn't stand up to Fauci and just did like, you know, grab the guns, ban bump stocks, which the courts are now saying are fine. Like, there's just so many things that he did. So people were questioning him. And now it's so convenient that they're all like, oh, yeah, Trump is, is great. And the hand of the hand of God guided his head so that the bullet missed by yeah. 0.3 millimeters. Yeah, this, this turning him into a deity, like they, they're really running with that story. It's crazy that to, uh, to watch them repeat that. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, you know, just from that perspective alone, it's like, wow, that's that's just so awfully convenient. Um you know, it, it really, it really has to raise an eyebrow. And, you know, my main thing is, so, I mean, I started out pretty hard, like, ah, it was a, you know, it's a conspiracy and it, it was a psyop. It was a, you know, a bullet didn't graze his head. Yes. Real people died. Um, but you know, I can't really know that just like people can't really know that a bullet did graze his head. Like if we're going to consider that, that the CIA and the, the, maybe the NSA and, um, and the secret service, like if we're going to entertain, that this was a real assassination attempt by a whole bunch of agencies that they really did orchestrate all this, then we pretty much have to entertain the possibility that it was also a psyop because the difference in, in complexity between those two situations are actually like, it's, it's not that big of a difference. It's marginally more complex for them to fake the bullet that grazed his head um, than it is, <laughs> you know, to just it's actually true. take the shot. It's now it, it would be, somewhat incredulous to say it but it requires more a the, real... the, the major the major difference there is like cooperation on a higher level to the point where you know you have a like a, a cult that's working together right like what do you mean for, like, for... like if the if it was a conspiracy to assassinate him by the deep state or no no the 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 conspiracy Saying trump's like to, in on it to fake it to fake it and that trump's in on it like that is like that's well i just i don't i don't I, believe that's 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 not trump's not that kind of person now i know you look at some stuff that he's done which is not ideal which <laughs> is okay all right um not not good and yeah he's he's got some ties to the deep state sure but him as a person is not the same as him politically right when everyone in the political scene is different who they are personally right uh because the politics are always more complicated than somebody personally because there's way too many forces going on and things you have to you, you end up having to compromise for uh him being in on it it just it doesn't make any sense to me honestly because they already here's here's the thing right so they wanted they wanted to win they wanted a guaranteed victory he already pretty much had that they're pushing biden still this whole time while he's you know on his mental decline and they don't even have anybody that strong they could put in his place so they already had they were already lined up for a pretty you know serious victory so them needing to do that was uh, doesn't really make sense in that regard so I think I have I have actually quite a, a few answers or responses to that. Um, so the first thing that I would say is that it's it's difficult to see Trump as anyone else politically that isn't directly tied and cooperating with the deep state. I mean, he was the one that pushed the genetic experiments on everybody. Without Trump, they couldn't have locked down the country. They couldn't have forced the masks. None of that could have happened without him. Like if Hillary had been in office and done exactly and said exactly what he did, no chance that that the right would have gone along with that. They would have actually there probably would have been a real insurrection in the United States if that had happened. So Trump was the only one that could have done that. And it's it's so crazy to see him do all the things that he did. I mean, he didn't drain the swamp. He filled it with Goldman and he continued all the wars and he did all of this, like all of the exact same terrible deep state tyrant kind of stuff that the other presidents have done. So it's really, really difficult for me to see, like to entertain that Trump Trump isn't part of the deep state now. Um, in a more technical sense about, you know, as far as like, did a bullet really like, did they, did they intentionally take a shot that just barely grazed by his head? I think that would be a bit incredulous because that's a really like, sure, an expert sharpshooter could do that. But the way that he was moving, you know, in the real, like in the moment that probably didn't happen, but real people did probably die. Almost certainly real people died. That Patsy probably was real. There's creative things they could do. They could have given him a gun with blanks or... Yeah, okay, um, so then the question is like, bodies, did he like right? scratch so, his ear with glass, right? I think people are thinking, oh, he picked up like a piece, like some razor or something from the side of yeah. his hand and moved it up to his ear, which, yeah, to be fair, like that, that might be possible. Um, And if you look at the video, it's it's 
pretty impossible to tell because of it. It's too low quality. It um, is. Yeah. I've, I mean, I've tried to find yeah. different angles and different shots. There's suspiciously few images. <laughs> there's, there's like six dudes. So in some of the, the, the views, you can see there's like six. What, dudes was, that was, was Hulk Hogan, like was Hulk Hogan involved? <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I want to know. Is he part of this? Trump's, <laughs> was he the Trump's choreogra just, pretty he funny. choreographed it? No, I disagree. You know, that, that, it's though. like, the, the, what was that movie, that Idiocracy? Movie. It wasn't supposed to be a template. Yeah. Uh, I disagree with that first statement about um, Operation Warp Speed. Um, I feel like, yeah, Hillary, maybe people would have revolted, but, you know, Biden did come back after that and kept the country in lockdown for like a year and a half. And not much was done. So, you know, I don't think people would have really revolted on Hillary. As, you know, I don't think it would have been that much. Not really people, there's only so much we can do. There's only so much we could do at the end of the day. Um, yeah, and I mean, no. I also don't fully agree with, uh, like, so in terms of, like, Trump with the vaccine and warp speed, yeah, that, I definitely obviously don't agree with any of that, but... Yeah, um, no, I don't think it any was, of us... It was worse that, when yeah. Trump came, or Biden came around. Like, they tried to take that and make it right. even go farther, where, oh, yeah, if your business right. has more than 100 employees, all of your employees have to take this this juice, right, right? this poison right. juice, uh, which yeah. was never a thing with Trump. Yeah, and unfortunately, we'll never know how far he would have taken it because, you know, he did have to concede into the election, he, you know, and uh, we got a new president. So we'll never really know how far he would have taken it. But, you know, I like to think that he would not have dragged it on the way uh, Biden did. But I feel like you know, I mean, he, he did set it up perfectly for Biden. He, he, he did lock down the country. He prevented people from entering. He locked down the airports. He forced masks on everyone. He didn't stand up to Fauci. He could have used his entire apparatus in the Justice Department to go after the states that were doing the worst of the lockdowns um, because they were terribly unconstitutional, but he didn't do any of that. Okay, we so need like, to look at what of this was federal and what of this was state because, like, federally, there wasn't a lot in place, if anything. Per state, there was wild, like, very, like, very differently, like, between states. Um, yeah, I don't think the federal versus state level, I don't think that argument really holds up very well because Trump had, he did have jurisdiction over federal um, properties or lands like, like airports, for example. And he did like, I personally tried to enter the country with someone that had a visa and mm -hmm. we got turned around at the border. She wasn't allowed to enter. Like we had to go back. Um, and that was under Trump. Like that wasn't a Biden thing. Um, but the, and then there was other only two weeks though. The, uh, um, but shut down? again, the, the other problem with the federal versus state argument is that is that Trump had an entire federal apparatus that he could have used the, the, the Justice Department to go after the states that were doing the worst of constitutional violations against their people. And he didn't do any such thing. Okay. Well, I guess you that then goes there. into the argument of sorry, go ahead. Whoever's trying to talk. No, 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 no it's fine. That's all I said. He, he, he do, do, I'm sorry. You do have a point in that. Go ahead. I think it would have been a lot worse. I mean, I know it would have been a lot worse if it was Hillary. Um, and I agree 100 with you on clearly that. Clearly, when Biden Biden became got into office, they tried to make it worse, right? Because Trump didn't. Trump never mandated the vax. Okay, no, Trump never. I don't know if I can say that. Trump never mandated the juice. Uh, as soon as Biden got in the office, they tried to do some of that stuff, right? Um, so at the very least, yeah. And if you look at if you look at Trump and what he was purely focused on, yes, he should not have done the whole warp operation warp speed thing and promote big pharma and all that. And I still want to see him like because he's never come out and directly like talked about that. I still want to see that from him. That's incredibly important. Um, and there's been some leaked clips of him talking with RFK, basically agreeing with him on the like the the medical sentiment of what what goes on with that and if you look at him and his what's important to him he was purely focused on just like getting you know getting the economy and the numbers he was obsessed with the numbers getting the economy and numbers he didn't actually care to lock lock people down or do any he just wanted to he wanted to push the vaccine through just to like get the economy and the numbers up which that that's what he was focused on he didn't actually care about trying to like Right, lock right. people I down like, force uh, you know it's yeah i think that once people started speaking up trump would have definitely eased off you know because uh 
that's his thing, you know, he's for the people. Um, I don't think he would have been so rebellious against the people, what, what people want, same as uh, it was with the Democratic Party in charge. You know, like Dr. Fauci became like a godlike uh, figure, you know, and he suddenly became part of our um, our government, you know, like he had a big say in what we do and how we live our life. I don't think Trump would have given him that. I don't think Trump and I think I'll give this this tyrant way too much leeway. He just lied about so much stuff on the campaign, like lock her up. And then afterwards, he's like, I, I don't want to hurt that woman. Right. And it, so yeah. he lied about Hillary. He lied about locking her up. He lied about draining the swamp. He filled it with Goldman. I mean, John Bolton was his um, was it secretary. It wasn't secretary of state. John Bolton was like one of these like old neocon Republicans that was around in the Bush era. And there's like so many people like that. I just. I mean, okay, maybe he's a genuine guy, but he's just, he was so under duress by the deep state. But I just don't believe I mean, look, it, man. Look how this he, guy, once he's dead, they don't miss. Yeah, yeah no. there was also a lot less information available at that point. You know, if they feel like everybody was in like in a foggy state in the beginning, even Trump himself was kind of just that didn't know what to do. He just had to do something. Um, so, you know. And who was the one talking to this year? It was Fauci. So... Right, 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 right. So he kind of had to listen. I think that, that would have. Yeah, I feel like that the light would have shined eventually. You know what I mean? He would have got to see like, all right, this guy's crazy. He's out of his mind. This guy's behind it all. Why am I listening to him? But you know, this is just my personal opinion. And I mean, this isn't me uh, defending Trump in any way. Um, right. You know, well, it's it's me trying to piece this together and, and imagining that he would possibly fake his own assassination attempt. That just seems. Absolutely insane. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. There's kind of one more thing that I wanted to address with that. So it, it, this assassination Good attempt point. is absolutely, or I should say, for my position here, I say my position again. I can't, I can't like be oh certain that this is true, um, but I think it's just in terms of like modus operandi, it, it's far more convenient. It's far more likely. Um, but anyway, so in terms of um this isn't about an election right this wasn't about trump winning the election he was already going to get the numbers to win the election this is about inspiring mass support for whatever tyrannical shit he wants to do next i'm actually somewhat concerned and i'm actually pretty um pretty highly on the thesis now that we're going to get some sort of market crash maybe within the next 12 months now um it seems all but assured they love 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 anytime the changing of the guard happens a new president comes in they love to do some kind of um, emergency crisis event where they invoke emergency powers. The market crashes and they're like, oh, well, we had no choice. You know, we had the best numbers in history. And then Biden came in and ruined it all. So now we've got to take emergency actions. You know, I don't want to do it, but I have to do it. Um, but right. anyways, like, yeah, it's, it's not about an election. It's about garnering like true grassroots support for this guy. And he certainly yeah, has yeah. it now. Yeah, the, the, way, the way people are like yeah, seeing him as being a deity is a, is a little... <laughs> To see that see that working um the other thing is jd vance well i think we're going to get to that and his ties to peter thiel um i think that's pretty pretty interesting as well i mean they basically peter thiel is basically oh yeah see like the people around trump are awful like i think trump himself <laughs> i think trump's a decent yeah. person the people around him are just all they're just all that they're just all the swamp like all of them like all of the right is just basically no different from the left. They're just slightly more towards the right. They're they're the same kind of authoritarians, um, and they'll do the same kinds of stuff just with slightly varying policy. I mean, it's it's really mostly the same. Option, no, like that's all that there's there. You know what I mean? He has to pick from a litter of bad. So I guess there were better people that could have been picked. There were yeah. better people. Yeah, you know, at one point I loved uh, the governor in Florida, you know, and he's just gotten sour. So, you know, uh, I, I really liked him a lot. And, you know, he's changed. He's done a lot of stuff that I didn't really agree with either. So, I mean, you know, they're good, but they all go sour at one point. As far, you know, as far as politicians go, uh, I feel I'm like curious. Trump is not so much a politician. You know, that's uh, that's the difference. What's your guys' reasoning behind saying that that Trump is actually like against the deep state and he's actually for the people and and that he's that he is who he represents who he is like what's what would be your reasoning for that what's your like evidence that, that you would put forward for he, that he has no reason to be where he is right now uh, he he can just really fuck off and just not give a shit about anything just go and live his life and he'll live an amazing life he, 
but uh, he sees the corruption and he doesn't want to see the country that that made him what he is go down the drain you know like that's my reasoning tux oh what's that question i mean i never said that directly um i mean i get the impression that you that you basically take trump at his word that you that you take him for someone who's anti-establishment anti-deep state that wants to try and reduce the I corruption I do i have that correct or not establishment not totally um I think he is somebody who, I mean, not anti-establishment. I mean, he's still I don't think he's anti-establishment either, yeah. Um, and yeah, even, even with that being said, I still like some of the stuff that he yeah, wanted no, to he's, do. He's a leader, man. You know, he, he wants to be the man. Like, that's definitely obvious. I mean, you don't need, you know, you don't need to dig deep for that. You know, he wants to be the guy everybody looks to. So he's definitely not anti-establishment. He wants to be the establishment, you know. But I think in a good way, you know, I try to like save us and kind of go back in time a little bit and just give us a little more freedom. Yeah, I just I just don't think that it's for him to fake his own assassination. Um, and then if we're talking about like the actual like, OK, so the only the only way that would have actually happened is if he had something in his hand, which sure is possible. It's hard to see in the video, but there's no way that sniper would have just shot him like by the ear uh if it was going to be faked right like that that's that's basically impossible right. and, uh, and you could say that oh he's trying to shoot close to trump to make it look like an assassination attempt but as Why we saw if he had moved his head where the bullet hit uh it would have actually like gone through his skull uh and somebody did did die there um I just, I just personally, I, I just don't see it. Uh, and I'd agree with a lot of the points you bring up body. And I agree with your, uh, very serious skepticism. Um, but just from my own standpoint, I just, I just don't see, it. I don't think he's that kind of person. He's not a career politician. He has, he's not in this. I mean, he came in this too, originally, like if you look at, and this is crazy too, like you see that he's everything that's happened over the past four years has seriously beaten down on him because eight years ago, totally different person than he is now right eight years ago he came in he was serious he, he wanted to do stuff like if you watch just go watch his 2016 rnc speech versus the one now totally different person and it's clear that this is all weighed on him in a way um and it, he did actually come in here to do some stuff to screw stuff up and people hated him for it because he, he was going to do a bunch of he was rocking the boat people hated him for it um and why someone wanted to kill him now that's still that's still up for debate. There's there's a few potential um, reasons why that would happen that that are plausible. Uh, but he came in here and people people did hate him because he rocked the boat. He was going to do what he wanted, and he you know and there's only there ultimately there is only so much he could do, right? Like that's why there's only certain things that happened partially, like building the wall it didn't get very far. That's that's the whole point of the system we have set up. Um, there's only so far that he got with certain things. Um, and yeah, I don't, he's not, he's not the best person in the world. He's not a savior. Okay. I, I don't buy into any of that. Of course he's not, he's not even necessarily a hero. Uh, but it is, it is true that he can be hated by a bunch of people, uh, and also not be the best person in the world. I guess that's my argument. Um, and for him, for him as a person, I just don't, I just don't see it. Uh, I just don't see it personally. It's not lost on me that he was WWE WrestleMania entertainment King. You know, like everything was so, so cinematically well done. Uh, one thing I, I would like to see more of is some of those high definition photos that all those dudes were taking. I certainly would like to see more of that evidence come out because I remember looking for it a couple days ago and it's like, man. Yeah, I want to see the wound. I want to see the wound on his ear. Yeah, I want to see more photos too. I love more high yeah. def photos of, from him touching his ear, you know, and afterwards. Um, if anything, I, th I thought it was like shrapnel. I mean, I, there's just no way it was a bullet that hit his ear. I just don't see how that's... I mean, is, is that physically possible, body? <laughs> like, do you know it's, anything about that? Like, I think it's really hard to say. I'm not sure we can we trust... Can't like, I saw one photo. So there's really no point in speculating about that because we don't even... We don't We don't know. We don't, we don't have an angle. Yeah. As, far as, as far as I know, there's no angle from that. Exactly from... That shows us very well from that side and we do see that one picture however there is some interesting stuff behind that one picture i'm sure everyone's seen it with the bullet flying past his head that picture was taken by um, i'm 
I need I need to find that article. It was taken by the same guy who took the famous picture of um, George Bush being told that the towers collapsed right in that schoolroom. <laughs> the same person, and uh, I think he's with Amazing. the New York That's Times. Crazy. And they basically Imagine never go to any of his rallies, but this one they went to, right? So there is a lot of fishy stuff going on, whether that means it was an inside job, whether that means it was staged. There's a lot of fishy stuff going on that's still being uncovered. Hulk uh, Hogan you- just hanging out with them now all the time. <laughs> that's the biggest tell of all. <laughs> oh, my God. Huh. It, yeah, I would like to know where he was allegedly, surreal. supposedly hit. Like, where in his ear was he hit? Because... In some cases, like, so, Tux, you sent me one photo that looked like he had a hole in his ear. Um, right. And that photo has kind of been it. circulating around. But I don't think it's possible for him to have gotten hit there without taking off his entire upper ear. Because his exactly. ear is flat. It hugs his head. And it would have, mm-hmm. like, his ear was in the path of the bullet. It's not right. even like a velocity bullet expansion thing. The Rip bullet would have just... ear off. Yeah. Now, yeah. okay, maybe if it hit farther out, maybe I could entertain like that there's just no resistance posed by the cartilage there. And so it just leaves a tiny hole, you know, on another location. But it certainly looked like, I mean, I don't know, the two major, two or three major photos we had, it was somewhat ambiguous where he got hit, which is interesting because, again, you know, blood packet, you know, that, that, that might be kind of what you would expect there. I think it was a piece of glass or something that, you know. The they teleprompters the were intact afterwards. Yeah. I, thought, I mean, I but you also look at him and you look hit. at his reaction to what happened. It just seems very, it seems real. It seems very real. No, that's, yeah. But the. I, I don't think it was staged by, uh, uh, if anything, that I think there was, hmm. there was people behind it, of course. I think there was definitely people behind it. Um, you know, t- as a conspiracy, who do you guys think might be behind it? I mean, if it's if it's so, if there's somebody so behind it, what, what would happen if Trump was actually assassinated? Would be the RNC would have to nominate somebody else, right? And and who who else right. is currently up for that ticket, right? So number one would probably be Nikki Haley, and then number two is right. probably Ron DeSantis. And the thing that those two have um, between them is that they're they're basically they're even more tied in with the Israeli money than Trump is, right? They're basically right believers in the the whole you know american israeli like give them give them whatever they want and trump does take money he has taken money but he doesn't care as much right and he has more more of his own control but nikki haley and ron DeSantis, they are an absolute yes men to whatever israel wants so they want more arms they're getting it without yeah, questions different. asked they yeah, they will promote this war much. in the middle east trump wants to at least supposedly put an end to it but Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis, they will fuel it for however long Israel wants wants it to be for. Yeah. Uh, I, I my personal opinion is uh, I know this is a little outlandish, but I, I I feel like Hillary might might be behind it. That was like my first initial thought when I saw it on the news. I'm like it's Hillary. Oh, what and Hillary's well, going to run like replace Biden. On the, yeah, uh, not necessarily run, but you know all the hatred and animosity that you know has been there throughout all these years. I think that's that's why I'm leaning more towards Hillary. Plus, uh, you know her history, her past. You know she's got the she's got the know how, she's got the connections. You know she uh, it's not her first rodeo. You know it is funny because with- she's the one that kills everybody. Uh, so it would be right, funny. Like, exactly. How many people do you know that are associated with 50 people that have committed suicides? Like, <clears throat> I mean, that's just insane. You know, that those are not coincidences. coincidences. Yeah, and I mean, that was just one side. There's also the other side. Okay, there's maybe some people on the left that just, just want them dead. I mean, it doesn't have to be that deep for it to be people who are just brainwashed. Right. Wanting oh, to do it could have really just been that kid was crazy. And, you know, like he just took it upon himself. Well, I, I don't really- – when we look at when we look at everything else, I'm saying there's no way that kid was like immediately. So like hours after that happened, there was a response that came out. I think from the FBI that was like the shooter acted alone. Bullshit. The shooter Bullshit. acted alone. <laughs> if we look at everything else going on with how 
security was low. It wasn't even proper secret service. The state police wasn't allowed to be. It's like obvious there there was some kind of inside job, right? Uh, was he was he MK Ultra? Was this an MK Ultra? Oh, the kid. I mean, possibly, but we still don't even know that much about the kid. There's like, and one thing I've noticed is that there's been so much fake stuff being thrown around. Uh, at, you know, as there always is, like pictures. People keep coming up with stuff with no bearing that's totally fake that's later disproven. So it's really hard to tell like who the kid actually was, if that's even his picture, the one that I'm sharing right now. Don't even know if that's his picture. Um, and who he actually was. And there was a video that came out of some crisis actors talking about the kid, you know, shrugging like, oh, yeah, he was always the quiet kid. Shrug, shrug, you know, and he always sat alone, you know, just totally fake. So we don't we actually don't really know much about this guy. Yeah. yeah. If any fact that they they killed him, like they just went up there and instantly shot him. Like, no questions asked. Just like, boom, this kid's oh, done. Yeah. Right. Like that was so convenient for many people. You know, Trump itself, too. Um why not interrogate the kid? Like they had the situation under control at that point. There was nobody shooting anymore. Um, they could have shot the freaking gun out of his hand. You know, they could have dead men uh, make no statements. Right. I mean, that's what I was expecting. I was expecting an interview, uh, not an interview, but like an interrogation of, of the shooter. You know, why Even would you happen? It's shooter? still gonna be fake. Okay, it's still gonna be fake. And then later we heard, oh no, it right, rumors right, about you know, Iranian cool plot to kill Trump. There's no reason for that because if the Iranians kill Trump, guess what? They get people who are even more against Iran than Trump is. It doesn't make right. any sense. Most of most of the rumors and theories don't make sense right now. Um, it's it's hard. It's really hard to know. Very fishy that they killed the kid. I see it as being either just people on the left who are not very like deep. They just you know they just on the surface level kind of like when I'm gone. Or I see it as like deeper as being like, okay, you know, a country countries that or industries or people that very greatly benefit from this war in Ukraine or, you know, the war between Israel and Iran in the Middle East, people benefit from those might not want Trump. And I know we're going to say that, oh, but Trump's not really going to stop them. It's it's hard to know. It's hard to know. Um, but that that's personally what I see as being potentially uh the, the candidates for the attempted assassination, right? Uh, I just think we need to be really on our guard right now about whatever new emergency is, is about to happen. I say 12, mm -hmm. I think he's, he'll take office before some emergency crisis takes place. Um, he'll probably really free Ross um, and he'll probably do a couple like freedom things at the outset to really garner that support. And then some quote unquote unforeseen emergency will happen. Um, and You're emergency really, members. It's gonna it's emergency. gonna be oh, an oh, infringement oh. on our on well, our digital. Angle, yeah, exactly. One angle we didn't yeah. even cover yet was okay. What if this was just I like I think Body mentioned earlier a psyop for you know like gun control mm -hmm. or something, right? Now that's not no. gonna fly with the right whatsoever, right? These people they they're not gonna that's not yeah, gonna fly with them. Uh, you really think that? Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, I lost my train of thought. I was talking about a crisis coming up, a potential um, for some kind right, of emergency. Right. Yeah, you really think people would just blindly follow him after all the uh, all this, you know, all this authoritar authoritarianism that we've been having to deal with the last, you know, six years or so. I, well, I think was, people are more just... cautious at this point. You know, a little more aware. I mean, I would, I definitely wouldn't be okay with it, and I'm a Trump fan, you know. If he came and well, uh, I do agree with Body so got... mentioning how convenient it is that oh, now, now everyone's like, like people, like I've seen this myself, like with people who I follow, right? The tides kind of turned a little bit, and people who normally are kind of eh, on the fence are now like hardcore for Trump, purely on the basis of what happened, uh, and and I've seen the opposite in some other people. Some people who are hoping Trump would wake up and become more of a 2016 Trump, but that didn't happen. He's still he's still the same, and he's he's kind of lost his uh, his mojo. Um, but the tide has turned in a way where, yeah, people suddenly are like, oh, you know, full in support of him, uh, who were kind of not before on the fence before. Uh, would that make them go along with something super like radical that would happen? And what kind of crisis would you have in mind, body that would? Um, be sparked from or be enhanced from the recent event that happened. Um, I don't know. I haven't, I'm still kind of trying to entertain what might be taking place there. I, first I was entertaining a civil war. 
I think that's pretty much ruled out unless they actually steal the election. Like if Biden steals the election, I say Biden, but obviously I mean the people behind him. And when I say Trump, I also mean what I also think are the people behind him, right? The deep state behind Trump. It's not like he staged this fake assassination attempt. It's like the deep state did it together and he was part of that. Um, But so I I think civil war would be ruled out if there is no stolen election. Um, So I wonder about a false flag AI cyber attack, right? Something like that. Um, I wonder maybe about a larger global war. I also wonder about the potential for some kind of magnetic event. It could very well be the case that the sun farts out a massive CME um, and it just takes down like large regional parts of the grid and the globe has to deal with like some real like true crisis there. Um, There's a few things on my mind. I don't have anything specific necessarily, but definitely a cyber event, especially in light of what happened yesterday. With that Windows, oh, yeah. not Windows I'm surprised update, that wasn't being called. Now, I wonder if we're going to see it within the week, next week, if this is being called a uh, a cyber attack by, like, China or something. Um, I definitely see a, some kind of cyber crisis being – because they keep talking. They've been talking about it for years. Like, oh, we're at the brink of having a cyber crisis. Um, and which, I mean, with the amount of negligence that occurs in the government and with, you know, government infrastructure, yeah, I mean, it's, it's possible even without the deep state being part of it. But – uh, I am, I'm curious. So what, I guess, I guess I'm trying to understand what would the assassination a- attempt or like, let's say it was staged, how would that fuel the next crisis coming up? Are you saying it would just fuel support of it would, it would, it would give, any decision they would, want to make? Right now, now you control, you control, you know, yeah. uh, all, all parts of, of the government, right? And you have Trump with all the people behind. So you have the political will now to basically implement anything you want to implement, right? Yeah, that's so real power, right? That's there. the Once you have the people behind you. That would that's the move. Right. Um, that would be the conspiracy theory there, right? In terms of motive. I don't um, know. I feel like the risk for that was too too great because if it's if it's like someone actually found out it was staged, that it's going to be it's going to it might. Yeah, but it's always just called conspiracy. But if if they, if people believe, and if it's now a belief, it doesn't matter. They're just, they're just ignoring reality and believing. And if they're told it's a conspiracy theory, then they say it's a conspiracy theory. I mean, I guess at this point, it's it's really hard. They keep, they keep drilling in on the. It was, it was an act of God. It was an act of God. Like, you know, like that's. uh, I, the fact that they keep running with that that meme is is pretty is pretty interesting and, and the, to see it working is is pretty hey guys, scary. I have to step out for like like two minutes. I'll be right back. No problem. All right. Well, we could keep going. I want to. I definitely want to get Body's take on um, the vice presidential pick as well, Vance. I want to get his his thoughts oh, on that. GD Vance. See, I. I... Yeah, I just I don't believe I, Trump himself was part of it personally. I do believe that there was some kind of intervention, whether it's it maybe a divine intervention. Uh, it just looking at it and looking from all the angles that we can possibly see now, it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty crazy what happened. And if you actually listen to Trump um, talk about what happened, like because basically the first time he talked about what happened was at the RNC, his speech. You yeah, can tell yeah, he's like was. he's incredibly yeah. he's incredibly emotional. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah. very raw and real. Um, and maybe I'm just a sucker. Maybe I'm just a stupid sucker. <laughs> uh, but that's that's how I see it. Uh, and I'm very skeptical. I'm very skeptical. I'm not. I'm not necessarily a Trump supporter. Like I said, don't forget he had Hulk Hogan on stage. He he was what, part the, of the WWF at, at one point. Whatever it is, WWE. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just the ultimate. You know, that would be the ultimate irony there. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if things yeah. go that yeah. deep. You know, uh, like that's that's basically what Body's saying, right? That I, d- I don't think I don't believe they do, right? I mean, you can. Yeah. It's possible, well, he thinks, that but he's can... he's saying like it's not as absurd st- statistically as you think if you compare it to the other absurdity of what what could be going on. Um, but I don't know. But then Who knows? So many things have happened that you would never even imagine. Mm. You know, See, I would tend to agree with this opinion more. Uh, what Edward McLean said once JD Vance was chosen, I think they said take out Trump for the nominations they can install their own candidates because Trump and JD Vance are really not. They're not. Yeah, that this is like, that's exactly JD what Vance I'm painted as somebody who's like, oh, he's just a mini Trump. He's really not. Okay, he's he's very much in. He's not. He's not this rural Ohio guy like people think he is. He went to Yale. He's he's very much on the end. He knows a lot of people. He's got he's connected. He's got 
connected money like Peter Thiel's money, who Peter Thiel founded Palantir, which is this um, surveillance. He's, Peter Thiel is driven, is driven by surveilling society and selling yes. that data to the government. Yes. That's his, yep. And it's the ultimate power. And this is the guy that is now one heartbeat away from being president of the United States. That's the story. That's like, so that's the more, uh, you know, we can talk about conspiracies, whatever, what may have happened. But like in terms of what, you know, what, yeah, what's actually going to affect us is, is that what this, what the, what this guy really stands for? Cause that's kind of, that's kind of terrifying if that's, that's the case. Well, I mean, for one, he's got he's got the Israeli money. I mean, he's oh, sorry, you sorry. Go ahead. I couldn't no, tell you're talking. Yeah, talk closer to the mic, please, so we can hear you. Yeah, I, I was just saying, especially if they go after Trump again and uh, they end up succeeding. Yeah, he'll have a lot of power. Peter Thiel. Yeah. I'm yeah. Back. So we could get into that story. Um, is is Buddy back? Yeah, yeah, I got, I made it back. Welcome back. All right. Uh, yeah. Let me pull that. Let me pull that article yeah, up. Pull that up. Um. um Whitney Webb like wrote an amazing uh, like journalist. Oh, this is actually by Whitney Webb. Wow. Okay, the man yeah. behind Trump's VP pick. It's worse than you think. Well, I already was very disappointed. Um, while JD Vance has his own controversies, his close connection to billionaire Peter Thiel, who is poised to have unprecedented influence in a new Trump administration, should deeply unsettle every American who cares about freedom, privacy, and reigning in the surveillance state. After the recent revelation that Donald Trump has selected J.D. Vance as his vice president, public attention not only turned toward Vance, but also to the billionaire Peter Thiel. Vance has been one of several prominent Thiel protégés, whose profile has risen in recent years with other protégés of PayPal co-founder, including OpenAI Sam Altman and Andril Palmer Lucky. Andril's Palmer Lucky. Recent reports have also noted that Thiel first recruited Vance into a circle while Vance was still a student at there it is, Yale Law School. Shortly after, Vance joined Thiel's investment firm, Mithril Capital, where he worked for two years before joining Revolution Ventures. Vance played a major role in Revolution's Rise of the Rest seed fund, whose major investors included Amazon's Jeff Bezos, the Walton family of Walmart, who boasts longstanding deep ties to the Clinton family. Vance later launched his own venture capital firm, Naira Capital, in 2020, which was heavily funded by Teal as well as former Google CEO Eric Schmidt. Uh, and you know this goes this goes on. Uh, it's a pretty it long. Into, it, gets, it gets really it gets really juicy. I mean, basically talking about uh, what is it called? Planet? What is the name of the company? Um, which the one? Surveillance company. Oh, Palantir. Well, basically, they talk about multiple surveillance companies that uh, Teal has 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 essentially funded. And how they yes. sell their Peter Thiel has funded yep. companies like Palantir, which is a CAA contractor, and Clearview right. AI. It's it's you know it's 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 the technology that the government's using to spy on spy on people, right? Um, they're basically trying to build a minority report, and Teal is the guy who's like the <laughs> the person making the money off of right. invent you know building this tech. Um, yep. And now that he's got, he's got in. He's got it in. They're using the it. They, use tech, they currently are using this technology, and there's a vision for the future of what it's what they want it to be. And uh, she lays it out in detail what that vision is, and who these, what these actual companies that these actual companies do exist, and then their connection to you know Peter Thiel and uh, J C Vance. So it's. I mean, this guy terrifying. popped about like, a year. I, I did. He's barely been a senator for like a couple of years, yeah. and now you know he's he's super. The only reason he got up here was because he was he's crazy connected. You know, and we like, always joke like the the way to really tell where somebody stands is ask them their take on Monero. Like the, there could there could be no truer question that I like no other question I'd want it, I'd right. want to hear the answer on from from this guy. What would your stance on Monero be? Right. I mean, that would reveal reveal so much. I mean, you know what his, his um, we know what his is going to be. Right. What what would he, what would he, what are they going to say? What would they say? I mean, he gets money from, you know, the person who founded Cal Palantir. Right. So he's automatically going to have to be against it, whether what, whether he personally wants to be or not. Like. He's very much like not only is he connected, right. so, but so he's he very back, so he has no so he literally it. has no principles. So he's revealing yeah. that he's yeah. he's pro surveillance. 
More more than likely would be, yes. Yeah. Which is freaking like wild. Because we were, like we were all betting website. on I don't know about you I don't know about you guys, but I was kind of ex- what excited me about the Trump thing was that uh he promised to um release uh what's his name? Uh Ross, right? That that excited me. And just his his like recent like increased stance for being really pro free speech and against like censorship and against CBDCs. But here we see that he's who he's naming as his VP is somebody who seems to be completely bought out in another ideology, the ideology of selling surveillance tech to the government. You know, there's y'all were asking about what kinds of crisis we might be facing. Um, The Saudis did not renew the agreement to sell oil only in us dollars so they're like per the agreement they're that that's expired they're free to sell um to sell their oil for whatever they want maybe it really Mm -hmm. is the case that we're coming up on some kind of currency crisis like a real no shit currency crisis um and who better to bring in some kind of cbdc by called by another name than the person that says that they're anti-cbdc that's that's one plausibility. It might be the case that the debt really does need to be restructured and that the monetary system does actually need to be changed to a significant degree because of this whole Saudi thing, because the petrodollar um, might actually be um, on the ropes here. So that's another thing to consider. Um, and bringing in Peter Thiel, bringing in these guys that are that are CBDC tied, there could be some relation there. Yeah, I think at this point... Um the new Trump admin's going to be like, it's going to be even more controlled than it was before. Um, and it's going to be even way more tied into the deep state than it was before. And whether you think about like, whether you like Trump personally, whatever it's, it's kind of over for him. There's whether, whether he was going to do anything like actually good or not, like it's, it's done. Dude, the new Trump admin is just an absolute disaster. Uh, and it's just going to be more, more shit peddling, uh, coming up. What other guys are you seeing seeing on the admin? Like, I think I saw who was the Nikki secretary Haley. of treasury, Dame, Jamie Dimon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me look. Let me look. Um, I know he wanted Nikki Haley to be on the his admin team in some one way or another. Um, more more neocons who are very interventionist for Israel. Uh, yeah, I can't stand Nikki Haley. Oh, no one likes her. Yeah. She's very unpopular, and somehow she's she's up there. He he had agreed to have a libertarian in his cabinet, right. or libertarians. <laughs> what do you guys think he's gonna pick? I have no idea. I mean, oh, Vivek, I guess. Vivek, gonna... yeah. I mean, I was really hoping that Vivek would have potentially been on the ticket to be a VP, right? Yeah, um, yeah. That's I what I was. Like, that's I what was, I was hoping for. I was hoping too. I mean, he pandered to the. He he penned it strongly enough for it. I guess uh, he didn't get it. Peter Thiel, man, right in there. I mean, just their their connections to the CIA. It's like a direct connection between the CIA and Peter Thiel. Mm. Vance. Yet again, Um, how convenient. and, And this surveillance technology that they build and sell to the government. It's like, it's like, that's it. You know, it's not even... There's not even degrees of separation away from it. Uh, Marco Rubio, Tim Scott, um, Nikki Haley. Uh, yeah. It's I don't we don't we don't have the exact 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 list right now, but those are some suggestions um, of people who could fill various positions. Um, it's just going to be more of the same, right? And the one thing in common that all these people have is that they've they've taken like millions of dollars from IPEC. Yeah. Haven't they all? Almost all of them have. I mean, Thomas Massey is like one of a few handful, one of a handful that hasn't. Um, and that's that's the biggest wife, thing. Did, they did they ever say what um what what how his wife uh, died or anything? No, they no. Um, I I think Thomas Massey. I I don't think he wanted to like, like he he said that he was going to get an autopsy, but he didn't want to like make a 
big like deal over it and he doesn't believe that there's anything like the, you know no conspiracy to be had with that uh and his wife's death but you know you never know you never know i is mean he he's, he's so right yeah Who? is he the what no no no, no, no that's no. dan crenshaw oh, okay thomas massey he's like um he's, he's like one engineer. of the people that actually like respects the constitution and actually votes based on the constitution like he's one of like just very few people who are actually decent in congress yeah, he's he's uh he's like a true libertarian and he's a really smart guy. He's like an engineer and like an inventor um and just has the best takes on everything. I mean, he's 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 really great. I've never heard him talk about like he's like another guy like he liked one of my tweets though recently. So I I think I could maybe reach out to him, connect with him. Um but yeah, he's 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 a very legit dude and he what he recently, the information that he got out recently was that basically APAC was it's APAC, right? It's, uh, APAC, he was talking about how APAC um, has a representative with each with each elected representative in Congress. Oh wow! Uh, how that's like a thing. He basically called them like a handler, and how he you know they have to you know they're constantly uh, whatever um, making sure that. They, yeah, they're, they're, they're okay yeah, yeah yeah so he he recently kind of exposed that and there's a there's a lot of truth with, with that when i when i ran for congress i was sent uh like basically forced to answer these questionnaires they want to know your viewpoint on something and want you to like commit to their viewpoint commit, right yeah and they want you to like you know write an essay explaining what you're you know that you agree with with their viewpoint and i experienced that firsthand and i was like wow this is this is pretty crazy so yeah um he was the one that that exposed that recently here i'll, I'll share this video real quick it's pretty it's pretty interesting there's a lot of pressure. in congress to vote for these things and our republican leadership thinks they're so smart you know we're in an election year and they want to bring up issues they want to put them uh in front of congress and make us vote on them whether they're going anywhere in the senate or not and they want to split the Democrats. They want to show that Republicans are united and then split the Democrats. That's one of the reasons they do it. Another reason they do it is there's a foreign interest group called APAC that's, you know, got the ear of this current speaker and demanded 16 votes in April on, on Israel or the Middle East. We haven't had 16 votes in April on the United States in Congress. So what's APAC? APAC is the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. And um, they didn't start out as a PAC in, in the sense of a political action committee, but now they have a political action committee. Um, ostensibly, it's a group of Americans who lobby on behalf of Israel. They're for anything Israel. Um, and they're a very effective lobbying group. They get in there. They, uh, they try to get me to write a white paper as a candidate, for instance, for Congress. They almost get on every, on what on israel like and i wouldn't do it and they said why and i'm like i don't do homework for lobbyists right i'm like <laughs> i didn't learn i didn't like writing term paper <laughs> college i'm not writing one for you <laughs> what did they say they said oh well here just copy Rand paul's term paper and put your name on it we'll accept that and i'm like no i'm still not cribbing somebody else's homework to do homework i'm not turning in my homework for you and, and what <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're laughing, but you know what? I bet uh, I may be the only Republican in Congress who hasn't done homework for APAC. And it's just what it is. It's conditioning. They want you to do something very simple and benign and, you know, for them. They don't really they don't really grade your term paper. They just want to know that you'll do something for them. And if you'll do something for them as a candidate, you're more likely to do something for them as as a congressman when you get in there. So this. My rift started out in 2012 when I refused to turn in an, an Israel and how term did they paper. respond to that? Um, well, the, they kind of got in my race a little too late there in the beginning and because it was hard to tell that I was actually going to win. And when they saw I was going to win, that's when they tried to get me to do the term paper. Um, they didn't have a political action committee at the time. They couldn't spend hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars against me at that time. 
Um, it was just sort of like a whisper campaign to try to, hey, don't vote for him, blah, blah, blah. That's why. Uh, because at that point, they sensed I wouldn't do what they wanted. When but I got what the did they with. whisper against you? What were they saying about you? Um, well, they would do it through, for instance, churches, evangelical churches. They've got an organization called Christians United for Israel, where they sort of co-opted evangelicals. Uh, people think it's a grassroots movement in Kentucky. It's actually a top-down movement from APAC, so that people who aren't even Jewish will feel like they've got to support Israel, you know, no matter what. And even if it's a secular state that funds abortions, they, you know, just sort of forget that part, and we've got to fund Israel. So they have networks. So it's more than just about the money. Crazy. That's the first clip I've seen of that guy. Um, I've heard his name a number of times and typically associated like with positive libertarian kind of stuff. Watching him talk, I really um, I really like the way he talks. Just Yeah, it's know, cool to see him yeah, just totally being transparent about that. A little Very bit, impressive, almost slightly dude. goofy, you know, and I, I don't like to see politicians yeah. that are super polished and they like their every hair is in place, you know, like he seems just slightly yeah. goofy. And if you go to Open Secrets, you can actually see this site actually shows you like who's received money, not necessarily from IPAC specifically, but from pro Israel Youth Center. And most of this will be IPAC. And see, even Joe Biden's received almost six million dollars as his uh, administration. Um, but there's just over 280 individuals who have received money for their campaigns. Uh, you know, several hundred thousand dollars each, some even in the millions. And it just goes to show, like, we have this massive external uh, force, which is basically it's it's a, it's a foreign entity that is the largest sure. lobbyist of our Congress. And they have they have so much money in it. They have a large amount of control in making making our politicians be very pro-Israel and, you know, other stuff. Right. Doing what they want. So. And almost all of them take it. Almost all of them take the money. And it's not without strings attached. We have an airplane above us. Yeah, that's pretty insane that um, that basically every every guy in Congress has their... Um, <laughs> they have an APAC guy. guy. Yeah, APAC they have an Israel guy. guy. Yeah. And, you know, like he'll... he'll I think there was another clip of Thomas Massey talking about it. Um, but even even before he even started talking about the, that, I knew this, and I started looking to this myself because it was, seemed very, uh-oh, looks like they've uh, they've dropped connection. They said they it's had very an airplane cool above them? Yeah. yeah, they said an airplane or something. Uh-oh, they're on Uh-oh, time. yeah, they're, they're getting, they're getting uh, destroyed right now. They're putting the an Coast Guard is in on the America. conspiracy. <laughs> Yeah, I was musing just just a couple of days ago about how like so the the Supreme Court ruled that money is speech and thus um, you can't limit how much a corporation can give to a campaign, but then like individual people are still limited in how much they can give to a campaign. Yes. So doesn't that imply that corporations have free speech, but like natural humans don't? I don't know. It, was, it, was, it seems kind of messed up. It is, and. IPAC should be forced to register as a foreign entity because most of the money from IPAC comes from Israel and it's Israeli money, right? Even though it's American Israeli um, political action committee um, or public affairs committee, it's still most of the money comes out of Israel and Israeli people. Which is funny because the money that got there to Israel in the first place probably came from the United <laughs> States government. Some of it probably did, ironically enough. Double uh, I think you're muted, Doug, by the way. We can't hear you. Yeah, no, we disconnected for a minute. We're back. We lost the internet over here. Not being drone strike confirmed. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Awesome. Um, yeah, let's 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 keep moving it along. Oh uh, yeah, we just have a couple more news things. Um, so this was shared on from Reddit. Uh, Monero Dice announcement. This is on r slash Monero. Disclaimer: of the developers. I'm not an affiliate Monero Dice. It's been typically served for the last seven years. I would like to introduce a new game on the Monero blockchain, Monero Dice. Monero Dice is a simple, privacy-respecting dice game. No accounts or deposits are needed to play. No KYC is required at any step. Choose your win multiplier, odds, and bet amount, and roll the dice by sending Monero. So it looks like uh, just a little dice game someone's created. That's pretty um, cool. That 
it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Using Monero, um, go back with Monero, which is pretty fun. Um, so yeah, if you if you want to do that, somebody yeah, give it a try. Let us know how it is. Yeah, someone give it a try. Uh, pretty interesting. And somebody right. else shared a Monero Master. Um, I'm guessing if this is this might be the same Monero Master. I'm not sure. Monero. Yeah, this is the guy that was on. Uh, he was on the show like a couple of weeks ago. Oh, awesome. A way to yeah, get like people into Monero. The crypto tip card was developed to give out when leaving a tip. Can I send you some crypto as a tip? I don't have crypto present card. It links to a step-by-step -step guide that helps them set up cake wallet. Oh, how cool. Very interesting. Very interesting. You did that. Yeah, we did. We did. Very nice. Very nice. Did do that. Awesome. Yeah, we That's had a great. card that we were giving out that had all the information on it. Of how to, oh, you were? How to Pretty cool. Yep, these are good, though. And I think that was basically it for the news. It was mostly talking about the uh, the two major historical events. I think at this point, we're all very tired of living through major historical events, but they just keep happening. <laughs> at an increasing rate. At an increasing rate within the same week. It's like, can't we just at least have, like, a break? You know, it's like one, but now this week is like two, right? It's crazy. But it's how they get you riled up. To either support or go crazy, it's MK Ultra. All right, they're definitely keeping every, keep keeping all of our attention focused on it. Right, it's like hard not not to like. You it's know, hard not go to be a part it. of it. Yeah, yeah not, not focus on it. So they're, they're definitely achieving that. They're yeah, owning I mean, the mind share right now. The amount of people that are just talking or just into politics within the last few years is, is, has just, I think, doubled even. Like, you know, I remember being a kid, nobody talked about politics. Now it's nothing but politics. 